If you want to design professional looking logos, you've got to know how to spot certain mistakes, but just as importantly, you've got to know how to fix them. So in the next five minutes, we're gonna be taking a logo design submitted by one of you, a lovely lemons, and we're gonna go through this, we're gonna open it up. And whilst it's good conceptually, there's a few things we need to fix, especially the technical execution. So we're gonna rebuild this one from scratch. Plus we've gotta make sure it's scalable, but we'll come back to that one a bit later on. So first up, here's the logo we're gonna be working on, Lumen Holdings Limited. You can see the LHL reversed in the logo and it forms a house or a structure of some sort, which is great. I love the concept. And typically with something like this, you might get the pen tool and just click, click, click. And honestly, this isn't the way to go. And I'm not saying that's how this was created, but there's definitely some inconsistencies with spacing. And we're gonna recreate this from scratch and sort all of that out. So to start with, we're just creating a rectangle and we're gonna set the stroke to, or we'll eyedropper tool the same yellow. And let's go ahead and thicken that up. And then we're gonna just, I think let's bring this in a bit. And then we'll drag with Alter Option and Shift and then press Command or Control D to repeat that transform again. And each one of these is going to become one of the letters. So we have the L, the H and then the L reversed at the end. So you can see already all three of our characters are the same width. So we have a nice consistency there. And now let's use the pen tool to finish off the letter H. And we could select everything and then we can go and adjust that stroke weight. So let's make it a bit thicker. And then for the white roof piece, what we're gonna do is grab the rectangle tool, click and drag holding shift and alt or option to make a square that is central rotate 45 degrees, and then delete the bottom with the direct selection tool. Now, of course, this isn't quite right, so we'll have to finish this off in a moment, but for now, let's just make it white. And if we scale from this bottom point holding shift, we can scale the width on both sides equally. So we're gonna retain that perfect symmetry. And equally, we can select both points with the direct selection tool and move them up or down together as well. And if we use command or control to go into outline mode, we can also extend them without changing the angle. Right, next up, let's select this and cut it with Command or Control X. Use the direct selection tool to extend these points and then paste it back in place. And I'll explain why we're doing this in a moment. So we're just gonna bring it down and roughly get it in position. And it might seem a bit odd, but we're also going to extend these ones up as well. So everything is going above that white line. Now with said white line selected, we need to choose offset path. And the value here is going to be the same weight as the stroke, so 47. And we can hold shift and use the arrow keys to move that out. We'll come back to that in a minute. First, we need to select everything, go to object, expand, and maybe make a backup before you go ahead and do this. Press return, and these strokes are now fills. And then what we need to do is make sure we select all of the yellow pieces. Oops, missed one there. Let's just try and grab you as well and unite them together into a single shape. Now this can be a bit fiddly, but there we go. I think I got it. Next, we're gonna take the white shape and bring it on top. And now we can select everything. And then we're gonna select minus front and this will knock out the white shape from the yellow shape. And now with the direct selection tool, we can remove all those pieces along the top. But there is something I forgot to do. So I need to select the white shape and copy it first. So before you do this, copy it and then paste that back in place. I missed that step, but it is quite important. Now, as it turns out, I was gonna use that white shape on the right-hand side to cut out some of the yellow, but we don't really need that anymore because all we have to do is move this white shape up and we create the gap naturally. Or we can select these different points and we can adjust the length. So we really can fine tune this by selecting the individual anchor points. And here you can see I'm back in outline mode, just lining up the top of the yellow shape with the top of the white shape. And now I'm gonna use the rectangle tool to select the left side and the right side of that white shape. And I'm gonna use this to crop either side off, which will leave us just a bit in the middle. Now you must, must, must zoom in and just check things perfectly line up. This is super important just to make sure everything is super precise. And you can see here, I'm just using minus front to trim off the left and right sides. And I think we're done with the original now. So now we have a super clean version of 
the original logo design, albeit a flat version as well. We could go and adjust the perspective again, but I think for this design, it looks better and cleaner front on. And when you introduce the angle, it makes lining it up and fitting it in website headers and all that stuff really difficult. And the great thing about this now, having this cleaner, flatter version is we've got the left aligned version, but we can also stack this and have it centrally aligned as well. And it's very important with the logo design to be able to have the flexibility for different applications. So here's the before, and here is the after. And the tools and techniques that I've just demonstrated are pretty much the fundamentals that I use to create most of my logo designs. And if you'd like to learn how to design professionally, I've got my full course linked below. We don't just cover logo design, we do graphic design, icon design, lettering design, web design, logo design. Did I say that already? I think I said that. We do a lot of stuff. There's a link below if you're interested, but otherwise I will see you in the next one.